Yes. Hello, people. Hello, welcome again to this session. Today, we have an amazing minister, team minister, all the way from US of A, Minister Pastor John Summer. You need to know him, a time to go through his career, his ministry path, a communion who has been doing the gospel of Christ from, I mean, we can't even name it all, but you will get it from, you get to get first-hand information from him by yourself. For once more, I want to welcome Pastor Minister Sama. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Davini. What a joy to be here. It's wonderful to be on your platform. I give God the glory for, for what he's doing in this day and age. Let his name be glorified. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for, you know, allowing your voice to be heard by fellow gospel ministers all across 237. So we gonna, we want to use this time, um, I mean, this stage which God has given us to be able to not just talk about your story, but also be, be able to teach our fellow 237 gospel ministers. First, yes. let's get to start with, we want to know you, know uh, about you more and get to understand who you are. So do you mind telling us who you are? Oh, no, I don't mind. I think it is such a great privilege for me to be on the platform of three, uh, 237. Uh, I mean, seeing young people that God has laid in their heart, the type of burden that we've been longing and praying for. It is a wonderful thing. You know, these are the things that makes us to, to be different. These are the things that set us apart. These are the things that make us to be absolutely peculiar. And I want to give God the glory for it. And uh, your question is uh, to, to get to know me. Yeah. Well, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, my name is John Summer. I was born in, in a little beautiful village known as Balinyonga. And I grew up in uh, Bameda, in Yaoundé, in Boya, when I, where I went to school in UB. Then I came to the United States and I've been doing ministry here while going to school also. Uh, I'm presently a, a, a doctorate student and I'm rounding up my doctorate degree, which I'm done already by the grace of God. But you know, that is not the most important thing. The most important thing is that I am a, a child of God. I gave my life to Christ in 19, around 1989. You know, as a young little boy, I'm grateful to God that I got to know him that, that, that early. And I grew up in the apostolic church. I never regret being a child of the apostolic church. It infused in us passion, zeal, devotion, persistence, and intentionality. And I give God the, gr the glory for that. That is who I am. I came over to the United, United States around uh, 99, 2000. And I've been committed in ministry, doing ministry until today. I am a, a pioneer, a founder of a ministry, Glorious Time Ministries. And uh, that's how far I have gone. Uh, I'm going to wait for you to ask the next question. Maybe that is going to be related to my music career. That will be fine. I'll address that as, 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 we, as we go on. Okay, thank you so much for that, sir. Thank you. I believe our fellow 237 gospel ministers will get to know Pastor John Sama. I mean, doctor with doctor with hear yeah, that doctor with. So let's get to know about your ministry story. What is your ministry story? How did you get into ministry? I mean, because there's one thing to be born again, and there's one thing also to to Absolutely. manage or to get into the ministry of God. So yes. is there any testimony? Is there anything you can pick out from how it all started, as you said? And then when you gave your life to Christ and now up to now you're still in Christ. So what is the ministry story and how can we learn from it? Yes, absolutely. There is a lot I have to share with young people. Now, when I gave my life to Christ in that year, in that season, it was a very challenging time. And you know, that's a, that, that's a very young man. I was in my teens when I gave my life to Christ. And it was a very challenging moment, but I give God the absolute glory because if not of his grace and mercy, I wouldn't have been able to, to permeate the challenges of the time. So I gave my life to Christ. I think the most fundamental thing for every young person to know is your spiritual foundation. Your spiritual birthday is the most crucial thing that you'll be, that, that, that you got as a child of God because you will always, it is a backbone that you lean on. If it was a shallow 
uh, experience of salvation, your spiritual life will be shallow. If it was a deep experience of salvation, trust me, your spiritual life will be deep. So if I may let you know, Davini, that was the foundation being laid for my career in music ministry and in the preaching of the gospel. It gave me the foundation. So it was just basic. How do I, how did I get to discover therefore what God has deposited in me? Let me tell you something. There is a clear difference between root gifts in the Lord and, and the other gifts, the other major gifts that God gives. There are some gifts that get into your life as soon as you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We call that root gifts. And as you are progressing in your journey in Christ, then you begin to persistently and uh, uh, evidently discover your calling your purpose. And as we were moving on in the Lord, I rea I had been so interested in music as a young boy and came. I came to Christ. My goodness, I gave my life to Christ. I come to a church. It was a little carabo church <laughs> in my beautiful town of Bamenda. I come to this carabo church. I see young people hitting drums and singing, worshiping, glorifying God. I say, ah, this is interesting. Then, because the only thing that was available at that time, Davini, was the drums. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. it was a drum. Hunt. <laughs> so as time went on, not it was not too long de thereafter, after I came to the, to the church, after giving my life to Christ, I joined the, the choir. Thank God they accepted me. I was so passionate to sit on those drums. And I discovered that on, not only did I know I had a passion and an interest of making instruments myself. If you remember the type of local guitar we used to make with with, with, with gong gong or cups, you remember that? You put one string on it, tie it on yeah. it. Oh, I was good in that thing. And I realized that there is something hidden in me. Not only that I could hit anything I could hit. So when I got to that church and got into that choir, guess what was my first instrument was? My first instrument was that drum that we were hitting. And you know, we started hitting that drum and singing. That is how I was progressively discovering what God has laid in me. I began to realize that people began to realize that I'm hitting those drums. It is different. It sounds differently. The way I was hitting the drums was different. And behold, they, they, they got more interested in me. Not only that, now when they tried me to sing, uh, I sound tried, you know, I thought that the best voice to sing was a female voice. So I was singing, uh, Almighty God, hallowed be thy name. Almighty God, hello. No, when I sound like I thought that was the best way you can sing. So as I was progressing gently but surely, I discovered persistently that you need to become real with yourself, real with your talent, real with your ability. In the process, I became a choir member. And as I progressed as a choir member, I became one of the lead singers in that choir. And the story <laughs> is so far gone. And I give God the glory for that basic experience. Then, as we move on from the state of the drums, uh, of those drums that we were hitting and the drums will hit to go and baptize people and back, I realized that we got to a state where in the bigger church, they had instruments, my brother. So some weekends will be, will hurry and try to squeeze them and run and go to the main church and just hide behind and see how some of those young guys were playing. We're shaking our head that my God, oh my goodness, those guys are, they are gone, they are high, they are right up there. Now, when can we discover this this, when can we have such an opportunity? My brother, that is when I was not alone. I had some other brothers that were, was with me. I have a reverend uh, pastor in Ireland, Reverend Emmanuel Might. We were together and behold, I looked at what those guys were doing and I kept on watching them closely, the way they are playing the guitar, the way they are playing the drums and everything. Trust me, as we speak, Davini, if I, want, if I tell you about my, my, my journey in music, nobody taught me how to play any instrument. Nobody. Just by observing and carrying the passion and the grace of God with what he has anointed me with, I was so focused to see what people were doing. And I could, I would go back home and go and borrow people, people's guitar, sit down and be trying what I saw being done. That is how I taught myself by the grace of God and go, began to know one thing or the other in light of the ministry. That's how I progressed to become one of the musicians in the church. But you know something, my dear brother? The church is the church. You hear me? There are some churches that have not discovered the power of picking young people with talent, raising them up, push them, and get them to where their divine destiny is. Many churches like that. My church had that problem. My church had that handicap. But I want to glorify the Lord because this day and age, things have changed. And because my church had that problem, where they will not see young talent, pick them out, 
equip them and use them. Many talents in those days, they left the church. Many went and they started doing things outside. But I thank God when I see young people like you, young people all around, having a passion for God and having talent, putting themselves together, like, like 237, to be able to do something with what they carry. It is a beautiful platform to get people to begin to be productive and substantial with what God has deposited in them. Let me tell you this. In the process of being a musician in the church, that was not, uh, it, it was not enough for me because I saw that, you know, I became just a local hero. Local hero in the district, local hero in the group, and local hero in the church. It didn't go anywhere because the church had not discovered the magnitude of what I had. So let me tell you what happened, therefore. By the grace of God, one day, Reverend Papa Billy came to one of the programs of the church and saw me minister, heard me minister. He told some of the fathers of the church, this young man carries something and I'm going to take him. You know what? They were not happy about it. But I give God the glory because thereafter I began to work with him. That is what took me international. Because I began to, to function in, the, in the, nation, the International Fire Conference in Limbe. Do you know that, that that is what opened many doors for me even abroad? It opened doors. People that came from all over, they saw and they could identify with that gifting that I carry. Let me say something to young people. You don't hide what you carry. You don't let intimidation crush you with what you carry. The least opportunity you have. Do what you do and do it the best you can. I don't care if it is just two people that are your audience. Here, amongst those two people, one person will tell your story somewhere. Therefore, you don't take anything for granted. What you've got is God that has given it to you. And that very God that gave it to you, he will bring it to the public and he will make it resound. Wow. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. What you've said, it's all centered towards passion to service and determination and this is what the young minds should learn from your yes. ministry story passion yes. to service because you can willingness to serve is one thing but passionate about serving is absolutely thing. and also thing. determination in passion to service is yes. another thing also so but from your story I mean, ministry story is something which should teach the young minds about passion to service. You are not just serving, but be passionate about serving God. Also, yes. while you're being passionate, be determined towards it. Thank Absolutely. you so much, sir. Thank you for sharing. It has blessed me personally, and I believe it's a blessing to all the, the young um, coming ministers. And yeah. now... If I Davini, okay, I, would like, I would like to add something, my dear brother, is this. Young people, take note about this. The gift that God has deposited in your life is not only for a local church. God has deposited that gift for the whole world. Now you, you owe God, number one, your devotion. If you believe that your salvation is from the Lord and you owe God your devotion and your commitment and your sacrifice, that seals, that protects your integrity already. Number two, after you know your devotion is to God primarily, then secondarily you know that there is also a man that God must have put above you that you need to submit under. My problem with young, talented uh, children of God today is they do not have people that they serve under. And that's dangerous. It's true that God is your ultimate authority, but you need to have a spiritual authority that you submit under because that will grant you a, 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 a divine mentorship and a protection over your integrity and will help to guide you. It doesn't mean that they own you because I have a problem with people that are pastors, quote unquote, or prophets, quote unquote, bishops, quote unquote, that dare to behave as though they own Young people with talent, you don't own them. They are servants of God just like you. They have ability just like you. They have potential just like you. They can win souls just like you. Trust me, if you give them that place and you honor the gifting of God upon them, ah, my goodness, your ministry cannot be the same. Your, 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 your sphere of influence will change because they will bring a new air. Because let me tell you something, the church cannot be complete on it until it has the five-fold ministry at full function. 
in that local church. And your Levitical, your Levitical gifts are right there with you. These guys with this musical talent, they are a powerful gift to the body of Christ. But most of the times, we pastors, we have treated them wrongly. We have treated them like just, uh, just, just, those, just those that are there to help me do what I'm doing in ministry. No, they have a ministry that must be fulfilled in the local church. If we fail to understand that, it will not be done. And you, the young musician, you, the young talented one, you must put this at the back of your mind that you are a minister. And Davini, if you are a minister, can you be talking anyhow? If you are a minister, can you be acting anyhow? If you are a minister, will you be dressing anyhow? If you are a minister, will you be making any kind of friends? If you are a minister, will you tolerate any type of nonsense around you? The answer is what? A big no, because you have you are in service for your father that is above. I have I have every reason, every audacity to say this to every young man. The foundation of your of your of your ministry gifts is the Lord God Almighty followed by your spiritual father here on earth that you are serving under because you cannot operate like a like an you are not an idle gear you are an integral part of the body of christ you have a part to play wow thank you so much sir thank you i've got a lot of uh, i mean what you said and first i want to say is that the kingdom of god cannot be completed without the fivefold ministry so it means Absolutely. it's talking about you know, we being many are one body in Christ Jesus. That's Romans 12 verse 5. Now, let's get to know about your music. We understand you're not just a pastor, but also a music minister. I mean, we want to know about your first song and how many songs you have and how many albums you, you have. Oh, uh, presently, uh, you know, when I, I was in uh, when I was in Cameroon, I was in the University of Boya. At the same time, I got very, very sick. Did not know what was going on, but and then I said, "Lord God Almighty, I cannot die with the talent in me." So I went back home in Bamenda and I produced my first album. Yes, I produced my first album, uh, um, and that album was not uh, really distributed that much. Uh, but you know, uh, we 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 distributed it only locally. Just a I did it with uh, Ally Music in Bamenda, I this. for those that know. Uh, I did it with Ally Music in Bamenda. It was local. And we, I had some very beautiful songs in that album. Many, many Christian artists in Cameroon, they are singing most of the songs that I did in my album today, but many people do not know where they came from. You know, many people don't know. You hear, you, you, you remember the song. You prove to me that you are God. Eh? You prove to me that you are God. Eh? Now, I did that in that first album in Bamenda. Now, when I came to the United States, uh, uh, there are many other songs, though, in that particular album that if I sing them, you'll be able to remember. Now, when I came to the United States, I did my second album, Jesus Reigns. And that, that is where, I, uh, uh, if you, earlier on, when you started, I was, I was trying to do something here. I don't know if you've ever listened to that, but Jesus Reigns, that is what I'm playing at the background. I wanted to send it to you. Uh, it is um, it's the album I released here in the early 2000s. So it is Jesus Reigns. Ireno, 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 Ireno. Now it's been played a lot in Cameroon, in most of the radio stations in Bamenda, in Kumba. Uh, that is album number two. Let me tell you something. These albums were not coming with ease. You hear me, my brother? No, they were not coming with ease. The first album, as I told you, I thought maybe uh, if I happen to die, let the devil not gain anything. Let me put something out that will be able to bless people. And trust me, that first album blessed a lot of people. But guess what? Since we have the, we were just local, local heroes, <laughs> you know, my yeah. brother, the thing, that worry, the, the thing that worries me is this, Davini, is that our churches of old did not have people with vision, yeah. did not have people with, 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 and I don't blame them. There were many people that were not exposed, my brother, like now, these days are different. This Android generation is different. Today, look, young people like you, you are already in this thing. You can pick, do you know you can pick a, one artist in Cameroon and you will cause that artist to go international within a year. Just because the resources are available, the ability is available, the passion is available, the potential is available. But those days, we did not have that, my brother. <laughs> uh, you know, in our days, I, it, I'm so surprised that I can say our days. In those days, you know, we didn't have that. So it ended just like that. Jesus Reigns was here. It was promoted a little bit, distributed a little bit. But you know, it still ended somewhere, my brother. That's why in this music career, we need great people that are promoters. We need people that know promotion. We need people that can create a brand. 
We need people that can tell you your brand and use your brand and give you a name with your brand. You know very well that every musician has a signature. If I pick my guitar today and play, anyone that truly knows John Summer will know, even if it is in the dark, in a crowd, you know that is John Summer singing. Let people be able to tell because you have a brand, you have a signature in what you do. That signature is what I need help with. Yeah. You know? So my dear brother, with Jesus reigns, it ended then. Then I came up with another one, you know, uh, 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 what is that title again? Well, it was another album that I released here. Then the last one that I joined, that, that, that third album did not go anywhere significant. And there are some beautiful songs there. I'm going to forward at least just one song in that second, that third album. So you listen. Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm, going to, I'm yeah. going to forward some of the songs of the second album so you can listen because I have them. I have them with me so that we will see what we can do with it. Then the, the, the fourth album is You Know My Name. And you know my name is this one that uh, I am still looking forward to a better promotion. So therefore, my brother, it has not been easy. There was just no promoter, no producer for most of us in those days. That's why until today, I am still the one producing my song. We need producers. In the church, take for example, uh, Davini. I just want you to imagine. I don't know which church you were, you were birthed into, but, you know, but I was, given, I was born, uh, born again in the apostolic church. Let me tell you something. In the church, I never knew any one person that was a producer until today. <laughs> Not even one. I never knew one person that is a promoter until today. That is sick. That is not good. That is not good. So here in the United States, I, I, I did what I could do. And yet because of, the, because of that background, we don't have the type of talent and the ability to stretch our antennas to get what we really need. And there is also the financial limitation that affected us a lot as we're growing up in this music, music career. And that is one thing that we want to eliminate. And that is why I applaud 237. I applaud it. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. You mentioned about, we have heard about, that means you have four albums. Now, we want to be able to know some of the challenges that you, you had and how did you overcome them in brief? In brief, yes. The challenges, as I rightfully said, no producer, no promoter, nobody that would see that, that talent, buy it, believe in it, carry it, and push it forward. None. Those were the main challenges, my brother. Number three, jealousy. There is a lot of jealousy out there in this in this Levitical grace. I don't look, let me tell you, I don't care the smile on their faces. I don't care the sweet talk they can talk. There is a lot of indented competition in this Levitical, Levitical grace. Many call themselves uh, music ministers, but they are absolutely deeply jealous and envious. It is all about egocentrism rather than the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, so how do you overcome some of these challenges? Good question. How do I overcome? Maintain my lane. Stay in my lane. Focus in, if I have two people that will listen to me, let them listen to me and get the right stuff. Also making sure that I promote others the best I can. I support others with all my might. That's why I love our daughter, Pandita. We love her. We want to continue to promote her the best we can. That's why I love uh, 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 the, the, her friend, Sister Joy. I love these young people. Emanuela, I love some of these young people that have come. It is, my, it is my obligation, trust me. If there was anything else I could do, that these young people will explode beyond measure. Trust me, that's what we will do. Because we need to overcome what we, what we, what we could not overcome in our days. We need to overcome it so that it doesn't destroy our children. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, why? Um, thank you so much. We've learned a lot. I've learned a lot, and we will learn a lot from what you're saying. Uh, we want to know throughout your ministry, have you got some awards, and which are they? Oh, yes. I've gotten many, many awards. Let me tell you something, my brother. Because of the fact that I was not part of any organization, music organization, I was not part of any whatever movement and all. Like there was no physical, uh, 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 how do you call that again? Uh, the recognition or trophies or whatever. No, but let me tell you something. I have gotten uh, a, a lot of what? What was that again? Uh, any awards. Award? Yeah. Award. I have gotten a lot of awards because I saw lives transformed. I have seen people giving their life to Christ just by listening to John Summer. You know my name. I've seen people giving their lives to Christ just, 
I mean, when I launched this album here, believe me, people called me beyond measure. I had to be praying for people on, on, the, on the phone. That is my trophy. That is the trophy that I get. That is my fulfillment. The souls that have been transformed. When Jesus Reigns was released, many people in the United States gave their lives to Christ and they were transformed. The church where I was, I was serving in, that church, when I just got there, they were not even up to 50. But before I left that church, it was already about 400 and something members. That is a trophy. Your trophy, my dear brothers and sisters, is not the thing you, you hold in your hands or the money you have in your pocket. Your trophy is this. How many people will see you in heaven? I say, oh, my dear brother, it's because of you that I am here today. Your song did something to my life. That is my trophy, Davine. Wow. I mean, that's the best trophy we can ever get. As Apostle Paul said, he has yeah. fought. He has fight. He, he fought a good fight. A good fight, fight yeah. And yes. he awaits him in the blossom of the Lord. Yes. Thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you. I mean, that's so, so amazing. We want to talk about, beside music, a lot of people, we also want to get deep into that. People get to know you beside music. What do you do? We know you're a pastor and yes. you know you're a minister. So beside this, is there any other thing we need to know? Me, I think that is a very wonderful question because, you know, most of the time when we come together as children of God, we do not, dare, we do not try to inquire, to know, the different giftings or the different operations that each one is involved in. If you remember when we started, we were just carrying on a discussion. I was asking you what's going on. And well, I, I want to know more about my brother because I may get to know something about you that will help me tomorrow. That's why I'm very glad that I was talking to Brother Julius and I'm very happy about it. Now, I am, I am before, besides being a, a, a pastor, I am a nurse. I'm a nurse by profession, according to, but I'm not so much engaged in that because of ministry. And I am a church founder. I have founded a church that is moving on by the grace of God. Not only that, number three, I am a counselor. I am a counselor. I counsel young people. I counsel married people. I do counseling. And God has been helping significantly with that. I have a ministry of reconciliation that God has also given me. I don't like to see people hitting their heads. I have a mission and a passion to always get in and bring people together to solve issues. And I'm also a businessman. I am in business in light of uh, depopulari depopularize depopularizing hell and popularizing heaven. That's, a, that's the business I'm engaged in. I am passionate in seeing souls saved. And I'm also trying to establish a, a physical business in the United States. And by the grace of God, I'm still working, working on it. I cannot be putting that out right now. Those are some of the things that I'm doing. Number, number five, I am a happily married man with a beautiful wife and four children. I am a father. And I, I am, that is a serious duty that you cannot take for granted. <laughs> so that is it, my dear brother. And besides that, I am a member of many, many, many groups of pastors. I am the general secretary of the, the communion pastors in this DMV area. That's the Maryland, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. area. You know, so those are some of the things that are on my plate. It's a lot, but God has been very, very gracious and very merciful. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so, so much. With this, we have get to know a lot about you. Now, uh, we want to hear from you your significant message to upcoming ministers. It is, um, for me, I've been talking a lot in light of all of that. If anyone had been following us from the beginning, you must have gotten one or two things that if you take them to heart, your life can never be the same again. We have a problem, my brother. And I want to talk to young people. We have a problem. Our problem is ego. Everyone wants to make a name. Trust me, when you push harder to make a name, then you fail God because God wants you to make his name, not your name. The Bible says, seek it first. It's not seek. Seek it first. The kingdom of God and its righteousness. Then every other thing. The name. The great portfolio. The wonderful things. The popularity shall be added to you. By the way, it is a far more powerful thing to be popular in heaven than to be popular here. So we seek first the kingdom of God and then everything will come in place. Your ministry will come in place. Your family will come in place. Money will come in place. Oh, joy, peace, it will come in place. The fundamental thing, Davini, is this. Let us seek first the kingdom of God. That's the best counseling I can give you. 
as you realize that you are very talented, maybe you are so beautiful, you feel that like you are the most beautiful person on earth, let heaven enjoy your beauty. Let heaven enjoy your talent. Let heaven enjoy your potential. And as I said before, number one, make sure you, you know for sure that your primary responsibility is to the Lord God Almighty. Second, by the, by the body that you are serving, your local church, make sure you influence your local church. Make sure you contribute for your local church. There are five whole ministries in the church. And that's why when I'm talking to pastors, I let them know this. Don't take young people for granted. They carry grace and they carry gifts. Use them, put them where they belong. Honor their ministry, honor their calling, and the church will be complete. Therefore, young, pe young people, do not take your talent for granted. You are a minister. And commit yourself to offer the utmost best you can offer. You will be bringing completion to the church. And as you are doing it, know this. My responsibility is to the Most High God, seconded by the, the spiritual authority over me, and everything will fall in place in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so, so much. I mean, this is a message in view. Choose to make the name of God and not your name. This is what yes. we have gotten from all what you've said. Choose to make the name of God, like the Bible tells us in Matthew 6, verse 32, we seek first the kingdom of God, the head of heaven, and everything will be added. So choose to make the name of God and not your name. Now, Absolutely. thank you so much, sir. We would like to know some of uh, your social medias, where we can find you, how people can get to you if uh, they want to listen to music or maybe to the services that you, or the ministry in which uh, you are in, which God has placed you in. So please, uh, are you available on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and all these uh, media sites? Yes, um, I'm available on all those sites. John Summer is on Instagram. John Summer is on Facebook. John Summer is on YouTube. Um, what, what, what have you? Uh, but as I said, uh, these all these social media uh, handles, we are still working on them to develop them, develop them very well. And God is going to help us in the process. So people can find me in all those uh, forums and um, in all those those social media handles, and they'll be able to to get a taste of what John Summer is doing. Uh, you, we, are also, we also have a church website, Glorious Time Ministries, uh, ministries.org. You can find us there. The, the, we have a website there and we are still developing all those things and we are going to do better. So, but for now, you can go there and check us out. You will not regret being there. You will be blessed one way or the other. Some of the songs that I've done, even some of the old songs are also on YouTube. Go ahead and listen to them. You cannot regret listening to the song. You prove to me you are God. You cannot regret listening to the song. Give out of all good things. You cannot regret listening to the song. Uh, Jesus reigns and God will bless you significantly. Amen. Amen. I mean, thank you so much, sir. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's amazing knowing you. It's so, so amazing. This is just a follow up of the Faces Initiative, which uh, Tutu Sengospo introduced, which we want to be able to recognize all those who, by their works, they have instituted what we call the God, Tutu Sem Gospel now. So this is one of the face, one of the face of the faces of Tutu Sem Gospel community, um, an esteemed minister who has not just, uh, you know, by experience, but he has sacrificedly work, uh, sacrificially work to see that the gospel of Christ is established, especially in the hemisphere of the Tutu Sem Gospel area. So thank you so much. We're going to be listening to one of uh, our esteemed minister, Pastor John Sama. You know my name. Uh, listening to this and be blessed with this short clip. I mean, it's something which is so amazing. So don't miss out to this. Okay, let's go now. <laughs> oh, Almighty Father, Papa, now you love me so, and you know my name. I give you glory, Abba Father. You know me, you know my name. Abba Father, you know me, you know my name.
Jay, thank you. I mean, that's so amazing. You know my name. The Bible tells us of that, that Jesus, I mean, God knows you even right from your mother's womb. I mean, that's yes, an amazing song. The name is, you know my name. We're going to be putting all of these songs and the links to it right uh, by the posting of this video. So stay tuned and get to connect with Minister Extreme Minister Pastor John Summer, all the way from US of A. Thank Amen. you so much, sir. Thank you so much for letting us know you. And the gospel of Christ must be preached. Yes. And the 227 gospel setting really appreciate the work you have been doing and we recognize it. And for sure, the time has come has and has been set up for all what you have been doing to be not just recognized, but people to acknowledge what uh, you have been doing for the kingdom of God. Because one of the things we need to know is value what we have. It's yes. very, very important that we value what we have. And this is the time for us to value that which we have. Because this is not just about experience, but it's a case of consistency. Because experience is different from consistency. Absolutely. Yeah. So just imagine in the 90s, 1980s, and up to now, you're still in ministry. That's a whole new level, I mean, whole level of consistency, determination, and passion. And Amen. even up to now, you are still very much passionate about the kingdom of God. So much passionate as started in the, in the, in the initial phase. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. We value what you're doing. And it's a room for advancement. And we only pray that God alone we be the one to come you on that day with what he has prepared for you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for believing also in the youth and thank you for what you have been doing to correct the mistakes of what, uh, you know, we, when we acknowledge our mistakes, that's what will make us go. And acknowledging our mistake and correcting it is what you have been doing. So we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a blessing to us. Thank you for, you know, for accepting first the call of God upon your life. Thank you so much. We do appreciate. And we will keep on with that. Thank you so much, sir. Any last word from you? The last word is just this. Every single one of you, servants of God, musicians and all like, you are divine. When you know you are divine, you will not play around with the giftings of God in your life. David, I want to appreciate you and 237. There is something divine about us. And if we do not stay in the secret place, according to Psalms 91, you will not discover the depth of that divinity that rests in you. Please, young people, Stay in the secret place. Know that you carry divinity with you. You carry divinity in your talent. You carry divinity in your appearance. You carry divinity in your character. Let it speak. Let it act. Let it be felt everywhere you go. May God bless 237. May God manifest himself greatly. This particular move movement will go big. And we are going to affect many more lives and transform many more lives and help them to get, get to their greatest potential for the well-being of the kingdom of God. I want amen. to say thank you for having me. Amen, amen. And 237 community, it's for all 237 gospel ministers all over the world. And it's always there and it's structure on that vision and that mentality. So thank you again, sir. And we are blessed to have you.